Hello everybody and welcome. I wanted to make another video here, an important video for people to understand because I made a post the other day or I shared a post on Facebook the other day which literally said uh, that uh, it was about the question of sin, saying people are not uh, are not fearing sin or worrying about their sin. They get offended not by sin, but they get offended by the correction of uh, uh, of the way they're acting or something else. And, you know, it's the world we live in today where sin has become normal. And the Bible says those that call good evil and evil good, and this is the problem. So when we think about this quote or the idea of that people do not get offended by sin, but they get offended when somebody tries to correct their sin, just shows you the state of the world we're living in today. And just think about that for a moment. People do not get offended by sin but they get offended when somebody tries to correct their sin. And there are certain words that are used in the scriptures, in the Bible, that when people hear these particular words, uh, they automatically uh, turn a closed ear. For example, one of those words would be the word repent. Whenever he, when someone hears repent, they say, well, I'm not a Christian or I don't believe in the Bible. The The, the idea of repentance is not... A Christian concept. It means to change your ways. And then the question comes, well, why do we have to change our ways? Why do we have to change our ways? And then you've got to ask the question. It's a good question is, why do we have to change our ways? And then I ask you, well, we hear the word sin and we think about, well, I'm not a Christian. I don't read the Bible. I don't know what sin is. I don't care about sin. Well, sin is not just a concept of scripture. Sin means you're doing things that are are, are not beneficial. Uh, well, they're not going to benefit your life, but it's living against the ways of our creator. It's living in ways against that go against him. Yes, a lot of it comes down to the, to the topic of uh, uh, evolution versus creation. And if you believe in a creator, what do you believe? And everyone has their own belief system. But if you go against that idea, you know, sin is going against the word of our creator. So it's another topic if you don't believe in our creator, because you didn't, how could you believe in what he tells us to do? When we look at the idea of people today getting offended by the correction of sin, this is the problem. People are more offended by the correction of sin than sin itself. Don't tell me to judge or who are you to judge me and, and it's my life and butt out and be personal and leave me alone and all this stuff. If somebody's trying to correct something that's going to harm you, why are people so quick to, to get offended by that? And uh, this is a question I want to look at today and discuss today, because if you consider yourself uh, somebody who believes in the word of our wonderful creator, and especially if you consider yourself a Christian, in no way should you be uh more offended by somebody correction, correcting you than by the actual thing that they're correcting. So my opinion comes down to you either believe in the word of our creator or you don't. It's that simple. You either believe in the Bible or you don't. And if you believe in the Bible, your actions would likely follow what the word says. But I think many people don't believe truly in the words of our creator because they fear the world more than they fear our creator. I see people out there today that you know driving their car, the police come behind them. All of a sudden, they sit up straight. They slow down. They come to a red light. Some people might speed through it, but if there's a cop at the intersection, they're not speeding through that red light. Somebody goes to a courtroom. The judge walks in the room. They stand up. They understand the consequences of showing respect to this judge. Somebody goes on a job interview. They want to be on their best behavior and present themselves as best as possible because they want to get the job and impress the person interviewing them. There's so many instances in life today where people know how to turn on respect and reverence and act in their best behavior, usually to get something or to not suffer from something uh, as from man. And these are just all these examples that I give you. We could also give you the example of the, the, the person that cheats on his spouse. 
You know, he has no reverence for what he's doing, literally cheating on his spouse. But then he fears more uh, his spouse finding out or even worse, the court system uh, giving him uh, the the result of what's going to happen with that if his spouse files for a divorce. So he's worried about those two things more than he's worried about the actual evil thing he's committing. And this happens all the time. You know, but thankfully our creator gave us a, a guidelines of, of what to follow and how to live and what to do. But again, if you don't believe in the words of our creator as as being what they say they are, that is the real problem. It's it's you're not trusting in faith and hope or understanding in your heart and your mind of the, the Bible says is true. What the Bible says is true, and it tells us not to fear man and man's ways and put that over the ways of our creator. And if you don't give sin that reverence in your life, where you're so, uh, uh, I don't want to use the word afraid, but you're so uh, understanding about how the consequences of sin directly itself will destroy your life, that you don't want to have anything to do with it. The reality is sin is contagious. And if you surround yourself, environments where sin is being promoted, environments where sin is a normality there, uh, it's just a matter of time, they say, before you either become around a people, uh, people become like you or you become like them. And if you surround yourself in an environment of living against the words of our creator or not taking his words seriously and not giving reverence sin, this is usually the transformation that happens in people's lives. Somebody could tell you the house next door to yours is on fire and the fire is getting pretty close to your house. Somebody could tell you that a hurricane's coming and you board up your house really well. Somebody could tell you that a tornado is on in your area and some of you might leave your house and run into a basement to try to avoid the consequences. There's so many things we do in life to prepare ourselves to, to get out of danger's way. But yet, many of us run right in the way of sin. We partner with it. We partner in the world flooding the streets of sin and we become part of it with no fear, no reverence, no protection, nothing. And I will tell you today that not giving sin reference is is putting yourself in great danger in great danger because the consequence of sin can be more harmful and deadly than a hurricane or a tornado or a fire the consequences of sin you know have a direct impact on your life and until you give it that reverence reverence over man and man's ways you're going to continue to struggle so i pray this day that you would Take this message seriously and understand this and see this. You know, when I tell you that Yeshua, the one they call Jesus, died for us, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? Because when you turn on the news and you hear a story about a man that walked in a supermarket and shot 10 people, I know your heart kind of grieves for those people. When you hear the story about a man driving his car and running over people, I know your heart grieves for those people. When you drive by an accident and you see cars turned over and the traffic's slow on the side of the road and you, and you get a glimpse of what happened, if you happen to see a body or even worse, a body bag, I know your heart just sinks and you're like, I'm so thankful that wasn't me, but I pray for those people. Why do we look at these things and let it touch our hearts so closely but when we think about the death of a wonderful Messiah, Yeshua, the one they call Jesus, our heart isn't stirred up like that. Our heart doesn't move like that. When we think about almost getting in a car accident, but just barely the car missing us or something else, we think about the relief from that. Sometimes we might even stop and thank our creator for not letting that happen. Why don't we do that with sin? When we've avoided or made a decision not to partake in sin, why doesn't our heart get stirred up like that? Why don't we have that relief and that thanks to our creator? Where is the power and the desire to overcome sin? 
Where is the desire to identify sin? So many people can't even identify it because it's become such a norm in today's world. Even often in many uh, churches today, uh, their sin has been accepted as, as a normal thing. There's a lot of sins being committed that are accepted as normal that would never have been considered years ago because the word of our creator says sin is sin, regardless if it's in the church, out of a church, or wherever it is. And now when you have questioning, if uh, if a transsexual or a homosexual or whatever you want to call them can can, can be uh, teaching in the church or or the different types of changing the word of our creator to say what marriage is and all these different things out there. Where, what happened to the reverence for sin or for, our, for for this not being what our creator wanted? And there are so many more things in, the, in the, that's being done out there in this world today that our creator clearly says in a word is a sin and people will even teach, well, that's wrong and this is bad. But what happens to the reverence of the things that that are not that 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 are truly sin, but that that people are just not even looking at anymore, and it's becoming less and less and less. There's over six hundred commands in the scriptures of what our Creator wants us to do and what our Creator doesn't want us to do. And what happens is they've dummied it dummied it down first to ten things, and now they've dummied that down to one thing, and people don't even follow that one thing. There's no reference for our creator today. Our hearts aren't getting stirred by what our creator is doing and so on. And people aren't following that. So we need a heart change. Something really has to happen. It ha has to happen. And uh, there's a great quote by Oswald Chambers, who wrote a wonderful book on, uh, on the daily devotions. And it says, the remarkable thing about Yah, our wonderful creator, is when you fear him, you fear nothing else. Whereas if you do not fear him, you fear everything else. And this is such an accurate quote. You know, people aren't concerned or scared or worried or anything to do. They give no reverence to sin because they don't fear our creator. And when you do fear our creator or when you, you're in awe of our creator, all those other worries about man's and man's ways go away because you know the source of what you're doing is going to help you be successful and proceed. You see, the scriptures talk about this all the time. And when I use the word fear, we could use the word reverence. So when people hear the word fear God or fear our creator, they often don't understand what that means. Well, doesn't the Bible tell us not to live in fear? Well, then why should we fear our creator? It's the word reverence. So change the word for a second. You're not changing scripture. You're making it more clear to understand this. The word fear in terms of fear our creator is, is reverence to our creator. You know, so we think about that and we think about the commandments have no other gods before me. So when people are fearing man or giving reverence to man, judges, police officers, and all these people over our creator, when their hearts are getting stirred overseeing an ambulance versus not seeing the word of our creator. What they're doing is they're making something more important in their life than our creator. And that's a big problem. There's a book in the Bible called a, a book of wisdom. It's also known as the book of Proverbs. And in Proverbs 29, verse 25, it says, fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting in Yah means safety. And I guess that's the uh, the message that we need to come back to and the message today that we, we, we need to understand and trust and believe. Fearing people or, or giving reverence to people over our creator is a dangerous trap. But giving that reverence to our creator, that's, that's what starts our heart more than anything else, is being close with our creator. So if something happens in our life where we do miss the mark, where we do uh, commit a sin, our hearts are stirred up with that tremendous feeling that we get when we see that accident on the side of the road or, or, or that, accident, that, that accident that we almost missed or something like this. And we understand this and we get this and we see the relief of this. For as many people out there today that want to talk about the corrupt police and everything else, if there's a gun battle going on or something bad happening, Often people are relieved when they see the police show up. 
they feel that sense of security, at least to a degree of, if it's a good police officer, uh, you know that, okay, now I'm, I'm, I got some protection. I'm here in safety. But this is the feeling we need for Yah. Our, our hearts need to be stirred up to Yah's in our lives. It says in Isaiah 51, 12, I, yes, I am the one who comforts you. Who are you that you are so afraid of humans who will die? Descendants of mere men who have been made like grass. And Psalms 27, 1 says, Yah is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I, it says, Yah is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? This was by a psalm by King David. Yah is the strength of our life. Why are we being afraid of, of all these other things and not giving reverence to our creator? And the answer is what we discussed and what we posted is people are more concerned about the judgment of their behavior than they are about the actual sin that they're committing. And that is the world we live in today. And it's a sad thing because we're getting farther and farther away from the scriptures. More and more away from the scriptures and downplaying all the things that the scriptures tell us. Daniel 10, 19 says, O man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto those, be strong, and be strong. And when we had spoken unto, he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, let my Elohim speak, for, I, for he has strengthened me. So we have to think about the side we are on and what side we are going to choose because we all have a choice and a decision to make. Remember that. Remember that. Hebrews 13, 16 says, Yah is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? And the question today for everyone watching is, who are you letting stir up your heart? And think about, I will have no gods before him. Think about the reverence you're giving our creator. Think about how you're truly following his words and what's stirring up your heart. Is it the sin that you're committing or the, the judgment of that sin by others? You know, what's stirring you up more? Think about that this day. Many of you can't even identify sin because you don't know your word. Get in the word daily. And if the word says don't do something and you've done it, you should feel bad. And you should repent, change your mind and stop doing it and do something else. And all it takes is a simple prayer of our creator to ask him to help you to overcome. If you want to call it a weakness, if you want to call it a misguidance, whatever you want to identify it in your life, help you to overcome sin. Help you to overcome the disobedience to his holy word. It says in Psalms 118, 5 and 9, In my distress I prayed to Yah, and Yah answered me and set me free. Yah is for me, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Yes, Yah is for me. He will help me. I will look in triumph at those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in Yah than to trust in people. It is better to take refuge in Yah than to trust in princes. And who are you putting your trust in today? Is it the policeman? Is it the judge? Is it the fireman? Is it the ambulance worker? Is it the doctors? And it's great to have these people in our lives to help us and protect us. But at any time, if you put those people in your lives more important than the word of our creator and trusting in our creator, we put ourselves in great danger. And it's got happened today so I don't want to say suddenly because it seems like it's so quickly, but suddenly people are no longer referencing what the word says. They'll take out their phones and they'll look at it and see what Siri says on Google or something else. But they're not going to the, the, to the true word to see what the word says about that. Well, let me see what this online encyclopedia made by man says about something. But they're not going to the words that are written by our creator in the Bible to see what the Bible says about something. And that's the problem. If people looked at the Bible the way they look at Google, we wouldn't have this problem today. If people prayed to our creator the way they speak to their phone, we wouldn't have any issue out there today. Every time somebody asks their phone for some information or something else and they get their Siri or 
Alexa or whatever else replying to them. I'm telling you right now, if you speak to your creator as much as you speak to your phone, he will reply back to you with the answers that you're seeking. He will take away your fear of man and he will give you a reverence for him. But we don't give him reverence. We don't give him that reverence. Our phones are more important. If we walked out of our house and carried our Bibles as much as we carried our phones and opened them and read them and look at our Bibles and the words of our creator as much as we read the screens on the, on the phones, Many of us wouldn't be in the thinking we're in and the situations we're in in life because he will pull us out. It says in Romans 8, 31, if Yah, a wonderful creator is for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? You know, but this is the problem today. You know, we don't think that I praise Yah, I'm not afraid, what can mere flesh do to me? We think flesh is going to destroy us, and we put Yah's word last. We have a problem of order. That's what we have today, a problem of order. We need to get back to our creator's order and the way our creator wanted us to do things, and it starts with reading the word and speaking to him. Reading the word and speaking to him. And for every time you check your phone today or speak to your phone today, speak to him twice as much. Dust off those, dust off your Bible covers and open them up and start reading them as much as you read your information for the day. For every video clip you watch on social media, you should be reading a scripture in the word. Make that a priority in your life. All right, today I saw five videos about six different topics. Well. Now I got to read 12 or, or 10 Bible verses and look at 10 different Bible topics today. Double the amount and get back to letting him create and lead your way and not what the world wants you to do in, in leading them their way and the way they want you to go because it's not beneficial in anyone's life out there. And so many people today are struggling. You know, and they'll sit there and they'll stare at their bills and, they, you know, and they, and they won't do anything about it. You know, maybe you should sit there and stare at the word and let our creator speak to you and help you and teach you how to overcome your shortcomings. We all have this great opportunity, so I wanted to let everyone know out there that when you stop fearing and putting reverence on man's ways more than our creator's ways, when you stop doing that, when you start trusting that sin is wicked and bad and something you don't want in your life, when you stop believing that there is a man who died, a bloody death, a bloody death, so you would put your reverence back in a wonderful creator and you stop believing and trusting this and you start applying it to life, your life will change for the better absolutely will change for the better. And I don't know how this has been presented to people in the past. And I don't know why people aren't getting it, but I'm telling you, personal experience speaks for itself. You know, and with all the depression and the insomnia and all these issues that people are having today because they have so much fear of man and man's ways and the consequence of, of man and they, they don't have that trust of a wonderful creator. They don't have that trust because fearing man leads to denying in our wonderful Messiah. And that's the problem we have today. We need to trust him. Matthew 10, 32 to 33 says, whosoever therefore shall confess to me, uh, shall confess me before man, him I will confess also before my father, which is in heaven. But whoever shall deny me before man, him will I deny before my Father in heaven. And many of you might think, well, I confess him and so on. But when you, they say action speaks louder than words. When you give reverence and you let your heart get stirred up by those daily uh, horrific events that you're seeing in life, when you make those things more important than our Creator, now, you are not confessing Yeshua, the one they call Jesus. You are confessing man and proclaiming man. 
you know, and that, and that's not not the way it's supposed to be, and not the way it has to be. When you're fearing man and you're fearing others in your life, you're you're leading others to do that as well. That's not the way it's supposed to be. We need to get back. First Samuel fifteen twenty four says. Yes, I have sinned. I have disobeyed your instructions and Yah's commands, for I was afraid of the people and did what they demanded. The fear of man will lead to being a crowd pleaser, a people pleaser, but a Yeshua denier, denying our creator. And we must not do that. Not pleasing man, but pleasing our creator. And that comes with the fear or the reverence or whatever words you want to use to believe and trust in him and believe and trust in him. So I want to encourage you all this day to start opening up your word and start praying about who he is and what he can do for his li your life and what he wants to do for your life and that you'll start letting him to do that. Trust in him and speak to him and tell him and let him know. You know, Father, I want to put my order back and I want to give you the reverence in my life, making it more important than anything else or anyone else, hallelujah. And this is the day it's going to start. So I encourage you, everybody, and if you want to pray with us on a corporate level every single morning, uh, five days a week, uh, Saturday is a little bit later, but at 6 a.m. every day on our YouTube channel, Torah Life Ministries, we do live prayer. So you can join us there and, and, and with other brothers and sisters, and we can have prayer together and, and give our reverence to him together. It's a beautiful thing. And also every Friday night, we have fellowship at 10 p.m. Eastern time on our YouTube channel, Torah Life Ministries. If you'll join us there, whatever you're going through in life, understand that there's a creator and he sees and understands and knows your situation. He wants your heart. He wants your reverence. And I just pray that you eyes are open and your ears are open to see and hear and understand that and believe that and trust in faith that that is the truth. Because the truth, it says to know it, and that is what will set you free. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. Put your comments that you might have. Until then, everybody, have a blessed day. Come out of the world, oh my people. Seek the truth, avoid the evil. Learn Yahweh's ways. Torah life ministries, come out of the world. Oh